Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Car Loop Data and Cobra Car Insurance. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Those of you who watch my content regularly will know that one of the biggest gripes I have with reviewing uh, some of these EVs, and <laughs> my own BYD seal included, is the lack of EV trip planning. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's have a look inside the vehicle. And if we just look at the uh, native infotainment system, especially the navigation, let's have a look. So let's go back to BYD and let's look at the navigation on screen. So when you, uh, you know, try to navigate somewhere using the native uh, nav app, so let's say Melbourne, Victoria, Melbourne, Victoria, first of all, it takes a little while. So it'll just give you a regular route like this, right? With no EV trip planning. It doesn't actually tell you where the charges are, even if you start your trip. Uh, some navigation systems are better than others. Some might even say there's not enough charge. Here are some suggested charges on route. Um, but most of them are like this, where they just give you the route. There's very minimal actual EV trip planning involved. So you kind of have to work it out for yourself. There's only three brands I can think of recently that have decent trip planning. That's obviously Tesla, uh, Polestar Volvo, uh, and uh, Ford Mustang mach -E. So they're the only three that come to mind of recent note with decent EV trip planning. But as for the rest of the EVs that I review, what are the current alternatives? Well, you can use either PlugShare, uh, which is you know, manually finding all the charges around the area, but obviously it does involve some planning for yourself. Or you can use a better route planner, so ABRP, which is what a lot of us EV owners use. But just note that if you want to use ABRP uh, integrated with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, with trip planning, then you have to purchase the premium subscription, which isn't too much at the moment. I'll leave a link to ABRP as well as my coupon code in the video description below. So with ABRP, you can actually use something called live data. And that involves purchasing a OBD reader like this uh, and plugging it into your car's OBD port. Uh, now, one thing to note too is that a lot of these OBD readers um, are notoriously insecure in that they can be utilized by uh, nefarious third parties if you're not careful with it. And also they do drain the uh, 12 volt battery as well, the low voltage battery. So I also suggest purchasing something like this, which is a physical switch uh, for the OBD port for three reasons. Uh, one, obviously for security reasons, you can switch it off if you're not using it. Uh, number two, uh, it's also useful because it doesn't drain your 12 volt battery when not in use. And number three, uh, as you can see, the pins, um, they do wear out over time. So to prevent you from uh, pulling your reader in and out frequently, uh, I suggest getting a switch like that so you're not having to pull this in and out all the time. Now just be careful, not all OBD scanners uh, work with the ABRP live data feature. Uh, ABRP does give you a list of uh, compatible uh, readers, uh, of which iCar Pro is one of them. So not too expensive. I'll leave a link to this as well as the switch in the video description below as well. This is definitely not too expensive. So, all right, let's get started with ABRP using uh, the iCar Pro uh, OBD scanner. Now the location of the OBD port varies from car to car, but certainly in the BYD seal, it is located down here. And to be honest, most of the ports in the cars I've reviewed are located somewhere in the vicinity of the steering column, usually underneath. So here it is in the seal. You can probably just see it right there. So I'm going to plug the switch connected to the OBD scanner into the port right now. Okay, so let's plug in the uh, switch into the port like that. Not too hard. And if the switch is on and working, you'll see that the status lights come on for the OBD reader right there. And then when you switch it off, like so, the lights go off. So quite a... Uh, simple solution to keeping your uh, OBD port secure uh, and also not too much of a drain on the low voltage battery when it's not in use. And obviously you don't want this to be a hazard around the uh, pedals, so the seal has got a handy little uh, pocket there, which you can then just close when it's not in use and keep it out of the way of the pedals. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, let's head into the ABRP app or the A Better Route Planner app. And you can see there it's CarPlay connected. So we'll look at the uh, CarPlay version very shortly. 
Um, also note that the premium subscription allows you to save a few vehicles. That's good for someone like me who's a content creator. I do get cars from time to time, so I can save those cars under the vehicles there. So we are in the BYD SEAL long range right now, but you can see I can also save other vehicles there as well, including our previous Tesla Model 3. Uh, there's a Fiat I've tested before and the Hyundai Kona as well. So uh, let's go to live data settings for the BYD SEAL long range. I think it's already connected, but let's just double check. There we go, it's connected. Uh, if you're connecting for the first time, it's actually pretty quick because you just go to uh, edit connections there and then you can link a, uh, uh, a new dongle or a OBD scanner. And when I first linked up this um, scanner that you saw before, it was actually pretty quick. It, uh, it connected very quickly via Bluetooth. So yeah, this is the one to get. All right, so let's go back to the settings, the BYD seal, live data. You can see that it's uh, connected, 73% state of charge and that correlates with my car's state of charge as well. So that is the key to, uh, to getting accurate uh, EV trip planning because now the app knows exactly where the car is with regards to state of charge. That is the key. Location, battery temperature, uh, calibrated reference consumption. All right, and you can configure other things as well. So uh, currently it's on standard. So you can um, you know, change things like you know, special tires, cargo, bicycle, uh, if you're towing something, so you can adjust those things as well in the configuration. That will of course affect your range. And then you can save all your drives, view them all later, um, share your vehicle with other people. Now before we set our first trip, let's uh, look at some more settings here as well. So down here you can uh, adjust things like uh, whether you want to stop more often uh, or whether you just want to keep driving. So anywhere from few but long stops to short but many stops. You can also adjust your destination arrival state of charge. So you can either play it safe, you want to arrive with more charge, or you can say, I want to arrive with say less charge. So 20%, let's just say. And then down here, you can add a charge card. Let's just try one of our local providers. So let's say EV, apparently you can add that. So I haven't really played with that too much. Um, charges and network. So, you know, you can adjust the type of charges you want to use. So it's a BYD seal with a CCS, uh, charger. So if you're on the road, for example, you just want to use fast chargers, you'd pick CCS, but if you've got some time, then you can also select uh, level two chargers as well. You can also avoid chargers too. So for example, the early BYD seals like my car and the Atto 3s are not compatible yet. With the V3, V4 Tesla superchargers, a fix is coming apparently, so stay tuned for that. But at the moment, if you want to avoid chargers like Tesla superchargers, you can do that as well. And then you can uh, play with other settings like the battery, destination arrival state of charge, charger arrival state of charge, charger max, charging overhead time. Overhead time is basically the handshake time. So locating the charging station, connecting, and then starting the actual charge. So if you're not so confident about a location, you can add more overhead time. If you know exactly where it is, then you can minimize that. I would say five minutes is probably reasonable for third-party chargers. It does take some time to handshake sometimes. Next category is speed. You can set how fast you'll be driving. Vehicle settings, so how much battery you think it's degraded over time. I think 5% is a reasonable margin of error. Initial vehicle temperature inside the car and extra weight you're carrying as well. So that includes passengers uh, and luggage as well. Driver has already been accounted for. That's good to know. Road conditions, so real-time weather, that's handy. Um, use live temperature and weather information where available and avoid on route things like ferries, highways, tolls, etc. Okay, so enough with uh, the settings. Let's actually plan a trip. That's what we're here for, right? For EV trip planning. So like I said, you need a uh, premium subscription for Apple CarPlay to work for the AVRP app. So let's go into it and let's, uh, oh, and we can see also too that the real-time state of charge is available there straight away. That gives me confidence knowing that the EV trip planning is more accurate. So let's actually plan a trip. Let's go to search. Okay, let's go to Melbourne. And let's see how long this takes to plan the trip. So not too bad. That was actually reasonably quick. Probably not as quick as the Tesla native app, but not too bad. Only took a few seconds there, which I'm happy with. Three charges apparently en route. It'll take two hours. Uh, it will arrive at uh, midnight tonight. 12 hours altogether, 898 kilometers. And there are alternative routes as well. So you can have four charges instead of three if you want. All right, so let's pick the uh, shortest route, 12 hours worth of driving. And then that's the first destination there, uh, Hume Highway. 73% uh, currently we will reach there with 28% state of charge. And then you can uh, adjust the settings, so um, settings for the map, so, so light day, day night automatic device setting, uh, select a map either satellite or standard, show GPS speed, show charging stop name on battery status indicator, avoid en route, 
we talked about this earlier, so tolls, various highways, all that stuff, uh, and charging stops as well, so that was also available on the app, but um, also available here on the CarPlay version, and then you can pick the vehicle as well, so I've got a few saved here, because you've got the premium subscription, then you can pick the one that you're driving in currently. And then down here, you can switch between uh, destination arrival time or the next charger en route as well, so that's handy. So there we go, that's ABRP available on Apple CarPlay for the BYD Seal, and I've also tested this in the Hyundai Kona, which I had loan off recently, so it's definitely working on two vehicles at least, and from now on I'll try it on every uh, EV basically that I have on loan to review. So uh, I won't be driving to Melbourne today, but certainly having this option now gives me far more confidence with uh, doing long drives in an EV, uh, particularly in having real-time state-of-charge data for ABRP to work out um, to keep me safe on the road and my occupants safe as well on long drives. So again, this setup is not too expensive. That's certainly not that expensive. The switch is very cheap as well. And the ABRP is uh, not too expensive as well for the subscription if you want to have uh, ease of use on Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, for your car's infotainment screen. All right, everyone, well, thank you so much for watching. And if you've had any experience with uh, ABRP and live data using an OBD reader like that, uh, please leave a comment below. I think uh, a lot of people would be interested to see that it actually works in the real world. Like I said, we'll be doing hopefully a real world long drive in the future in the BYD Seal or another EV to make sure this setup actually works and is accurate when it comes to actual EV trip planning. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy charging.